Hey everyone, it's Colin from Legalized Mischief Productions. Thanks for joining me. Today is going to be part one of the video tutorial series on painting custodian guard. And we are going to be, surprise, surprise, painting gold today. We're going to be laying down the armor, base coats, and highlights, uh, putting in some shadows, all with the airbrush. And then in part two, we'll move on to the brushwork and start uh, defining some of the details. I uh, love these models. These are incredibly detailed, full of character. And what we're going to go over today, it'll be the same gold recipe that I would use if I were doing dreadnoughts or tanks or any of the custodian models uh, that are out there right now, which are phenomenal. Some of my favorite models to paint. Uh, today we're going to be using golds from Scale 75 their scale color range and if you don't have these yet you really should especially if you're going to be painting a bunch of custodies you really should consider investing in these paints they are incredible they are hands down the best for gold uh, they're really really rich they have a lot of uh, interesting tones in them and the ink tense violet is from their inks range incredibly pigmented and we're going to be using that when we go to inject some of the shadows into uh, the recesses and you'll see uh, so scale color by scale 75 fantastic cannot recommend these enough and so the the colors we're using today we're using the ink test ink tense violet Decayed Metal, Oro Elfico or Elven Gold, and then Moonstone Alchemy. The Alchemy series from them are basically tinted uh, white metallics. So they're this one is kind of a rosy, kind of a rosy rose gold ish. Uh, it has this orange in it. That's really nice. Um, that's going to be. A really nice highlight color to tie in you can see the decayed metal it has those red tones in it um, and a little bit of purple a little bit of brown so that's going to play really nicely with the accent color for the custodies which is going to be red because um, I'm painting kind of the standard uh, custodian guard scheme so first order of business is to lay down a nice even base coat on the armor and for that we are going to mix decayed metal and elven gold and we're gonna do about 50 50 I'd say and you hear that loud clacking is because these paints do separate quite a bit especially when you first get them they're they're really the pigments really settled at the bottom so I get um, the little stainless steel ball bearings to put into the paint pots to help agitate a uh, little paint agitator some people use glass some people use um, you know stainless steel I've heard some rust, but I've never had that issue. So all I know is if you're just shaking them like you would a regular acrylic paint, it's not it's not going to mix well enough. You really need an agitator or something in there to fully mix the paint before you start using it. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to it's just not going to work out for you. So first things first, we're going to lay down. We are going to get a nice, even base coat on the armor, and then we'll start highlighting it up, and then we'll go back and we'll do the shadows. And you see just how rich, just how rich that gold is. It's incredible. I love these paints. So we're going to keep... Yeah, we might as well try to avoid the plume on the head. For the most part, we're going to be painting, we're going to be leaving the gold 
on the halberd because that is going to stay predominantly gold uh, in our color scheme. So really get a nice, don't be shy, really want good coverage on this first pass. Everything else is going to go off of off of this first application of the base coat. So we really want to be thorough. Of course, we don't want to overdo it, but one of the things I really like about the Scale 75 paints as well, uh, the metallics, is they are ready to go out of the pot for the airbrush. Uh, as you could tell, I didn't I didn't mix anything I uh, didn't didn't thin it down at all uh, this is shooting straight I will thin uh, when it comes time to do you know glazing in the shadows and glazing in um, we're gonna do an overall filter at the end um, before we move on to brushwork so you, you know for different applications you can you can thin it down but for just spraying these base coats I really want I really want good coverage and these are these are ready to go straight out of the pot so we've applied our base coat and you can see we've got really nice coverage on that and it's this really rich gold uh, a lot of that richness comes from the decayed metal it's like if you see the elven gold the elven gold is going to be much lighter than that mix. And this is just straight elven gold. This is going to be our next our next step for the highlight. So we've got that good base tone down. And now oops. Now you can see on my hand there how how much lighter just that pure elven gold is. So it's really important to mix uh, that 50-50 mix with the decayed metal for the first base coat because uh, we do want that richness in the undertone. So starting, we're going to do this just like I talked about in the grayscale tutorial with the Space Marine. Uh, if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. Um, it's going to be a common theme in my tutorials. So uh, just like we did on the Space Marine, uh, heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. And for this model, you know, we want the light coming from the same direction. Um, the helmet is prominent. The center of the chest on this model is not is not obscured by their weapon, so it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more prominent. We are gonna specifically highlight the center of the chest. We want that insignia, uh, the lightning bolts. Go, we want those to be prominent but not overshadow uh, the face plate and the kind of center of the forehead where you have the eagle and the gem here. Uh, it's just a really stunning visual for the model. So we want to maintain that, but we are going to, we are going to do the chest and then knees and toes, top of the forearm. And then we are going to, uh, because the weapon is going to be kind of the same gold tones as the rest of the model, we are going to want to pay attention to that and highlight that as well. So we're going to start off just right here on the head. And we start laying in, really start laying down that pure elven gold right in the center of the chest. And you can see that's really starting, really starting to develop. And the weapon, and we want the end. Of, we want the end of the weapon to be lighter than the haft. We really want kind of the combi bolter blade area. That blade's going to get a lot of attention. That's going to be like a really shocking turquoise kind of aqua blue when we're done. So we really want that. That's going to draw attention. It's going to contrast nicely with all the red that we have going on with the plume and the red leather on uh, his forearms. So 
we're thinking about that while even when we're just in this base coach stage, we're thinking ahead. We're thinking about how that's going to look. So a lot of attention is going to be drawn to the guardian spear, to the blade. So we want to make sure that the end of the weapon itself, the, the bolter area is also highlighted. If the blade is really prominent, but we were to try and leave the end of the bolter here in shadow, it would look a little awkward just from a lighting perspective. So... We want to keep that in mind while we're laying these colors down. Um, what's going to be coming after that's going to influence those colors later because you really don't want to have to go back and take a look at it and say, oh, gee, what happened? Why does this look a little off? Oh, it's because, you know, now I have to go lighten up the weapon. Well, if the rest of the model's painted, that's going to be a lot harder to do than just keeping it in mind from the outset and whoop. And taking care of it right out front um, that oversprayed but that's not that's not a big deal we're not gonna worry about that so a little bit on the knees here and again we're just gonna go straight across we want to keep we want to keep this in shadow and that's gonna be accentuated when we go back and we glaze in the shadows so and in this step and toes so you see we're starting to get this beautiful gold we're starting to get that definition uh, when we move to the side we want to make sure that we've got the top of these shoulder pads because again just like just like with the Space Marine the focus on this model is right right in here heads shoulders head shoulders and torso is really going to be the focus of the model so we want to make sure that we get the top of those shoulder pads but we leave the back area here in shadow and the little elbow guard we're just going to hit the top of that a little bit because we're going to go back and we're going to shade the bottom of that now the armor is a little different here because they're not wearing backpacks so they have these vents and they have the butt plate and then they have this uh, sculpted kind of um, calf in their in their lower leg plate um, so that's going to be a really cool area to get some definition and so we want to pay attention to those shapes while we're putting down these base coats as well so top of the vents and a little bit on the eagle but we're going to leave we're going to leave that mid area remember we want to elongate this model with using just light so top of the vents and the eagle a little bit at the bottom of the butt plate and then we're going to go in here and we're actually going to do a little bit on the calf area and then again down down on the foot where we just like we did on the space marine and what's that what that's doing is that's giving us that nice shadow on the back of the leg and just giving some more definition to that shape and coming around the side this little hip again the hip plate mind the hip plates little hip plate sticking out so we're going to hit that briefly but you can see on the back of this shoulder pad we still have that nice rich kind of decayed metal and elven gold mix moving up to this really nice yellow gold of just the pure the pure elven gold so from there we are now going to go to the highest highlight and this is going to be a little this is going to be a little extreme so we really want because because the gold is the majority of the model we're going to be spending more time on it we're going to, it's going to be a lot more steps than your typical you know power armor or whatever would be um, but that's where you get the character of this army. One of the things I love about Custodes is that they are quote unquote easy to paint and easy to get to look good, but to get it to look really good, to get it to kind of that next level of like, wow, that's a really well painted Custodes army. Uh, you really want to work that gold. But again, you know, I'm not talking about doing like a whole non-metallic army or something insane like that. 
but you really want to work this gold and um, you'll get that you get that really striking gold army um, where it's really a simple palette I mean it's red and gold and then whatever your whatever your tertiary color is for your power weapons in this case it's that aqua I'm gonna be doing that aqua green blue which looks really nice um, so the time you spend on the gold and nailing this gold will pay off huge because you know 80% of the army 90% of the army is is this gold so this moonstone alchemy is gonna be kind of a shocking highlight and that's okay because we're still gonna go back we're gonna glaze in the shadows and that's just gonna accentuate it even more but then when we're done with the shadows we're gonna go back and we're gonna do an overall glaze of this yellow gold really light across the model and that's gonna kind of tone everything down and then we're gonna do an oil wash which is gonna kind of integrate everything together as well so at this stage it's gonna look it's gonna look a little freaky it's gonna look like it would be a little shocking so and you can see how light how light that moonstone alchemy is and I like the moonstone because it does have that reddish tone so that's gonna tie in that's gonna tie in with the decayed metal so again head center of the chest top of the shoulders a little bit on the top of the arm but this is really this is where you really want the eye to focus is going to be on this highest point so you can see we have that really nice yellow metal like if I turn this model around I mean that looks good you could even just stop there and, and have a nice looking gold but again because this army is 90 percent gold we really want to work it to get a really rich and diverse interesting looking gold so if you look at the back you see those nice gold highlights and then when you go out the front with that moonstone alchemy it, it's paler it's lighter um, so you're really you're really starting to see the light and the shadow a little bit on the knees just a touch a little bit on the end of the toes a little on the end of the gun and you can see there we're starting you know, I forgot to drill his barrel We'll have to go back and do that before we do before we do the uh, silver metallics. But always drill your barrels, people. Please, please, always. Um, and this hip plate we don't want to hit. We want to leave that because we don't want that to be, the eye to just automatically be drawn to the hip plate. It is sticking out. We are acknowledging that with the elven gold highlight. And we're going to deepen those shadows in the mid area, in the torso. Um, but we don't, want, we don't want to bring it all the way up to the, to the moonstone. We want to leave that with just that elven gold. Uh, we are going to hit this little elbow plate here in just a touch. And again, the eagle on the back, the top of the vents. Just a little bit on the bottom corner of the butt plate. And a little dot. A little dot on the calves. And a little dot on the back of the feet, just like we did on the Space Marine. And that's it for the Moonstone Alchemy. Each time that we go through, we are highlighting a little less, a little less, uh, because we want to draw... We want to draw those shapes out so now that we've done now that we've done the highlights now we're going to go back and we're going to insert some shadow into the recesses and really really accentuate um, the shadows on this model for this we are going to want to add a little bit of water because we want this to be we want this to be a little thin we don't want this 
we, we want it to be a little thin. We want it to be a little bit more translucent because um, we do want it to blend. Just a few drops of just straight decayed metal. And then this ink tense, I'm actually, I'm going to show you this on the my dirty palette here, but these ink tense inks are insanely pigmented. I mean, these things, and you'll see it when we do, because we're going to work with these a little bit on this model with the red. Um, we use ink tense red. Literally one drop is usually all you need for whatever you might be doing with these things if you if you can see that it's almost it's almost like a paint it is transparent but this is incredibly incredibly densely pigmented so if we do, if we were just to add a couple drops of this into the decayed metal we would just have we would just have violet there wouldn't be much decayed metal to speak of um, because it would just take over. It would be like a metallic violet, um, but that's not. But that's not what we want either. We want just a really rich, dark, uh, really rich, dark metallic. But we want it to keep those red tones that the decayed metal already had. <clears throat> Excuse me. We wanted to keep the red tones the decay metal already had before we started mixing in the violet. So this is gonna be, this is pretty dark. Um, going from, I'll show you them. So this is gonna be pretty dark, but it's gonna be, it's, it's flowing well, it's transparent because of that ink, because we, we did water it down. So it's gonna be a nice glaze in the shadow promise to get a palette cam up and working uh, in the near future but you know baby steps so we're going back and we're gonna go and really we're gonna flip this model basically flip this model upside down and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start laying in these shadows On the underside of the, whoop, can't can't see that with the base in the way, can you? Underside of the pauldron there. Middle of the torso. Underneath the torso back here. And that's going to get the top of that kind of butt plate area. And you can see how much that deepens the shadow in the torso area of the model. So you can see there, we're really getting really good contrast in that area. Kind of go back and revisit the underside of that. We don't want to, we don't want to overwhelm these shadows. We want to work it up because this is thinner. It is a little more translucent. So we could, we could overspray this and really start to get it to act like a wash, which is not what we want. We want it to be kind of in that really thin glaze territory. So back of the bolter, because that is going to be kind of the reverse side that is going to be more in shadow. And back of the helmet. And here's where we're really going to, really going to, to find this leg armor really nicely. So we're gonna tilt them tilt the model back and try to shoot right under right under the calf there. A little bit of brush control with the airbrush. So there you see that in the calf area, those are starting to get well defined. Underside of the arm back here, 
in kind of this lower corner of the shoulder pad. Definitely want to hit that the bottom of the elbow plate. And you can see we went a little heavy there. Got a little spider webbing, so we're just going to dry that off and kind of come in from the side. There we go. And even that out. So now it's nice and even. No worries, mistakes happen. Turn that up a little bit. Bottom of the front. So we have this really nice going from Moonstone at the top all the way down to that, oops. All the way down to that decayed metal and violet on the bottom there and really getting some nice definition. Then the middle of the stomach and back. Back in there. Side armpit area. And we're gonna turn this upside down and we're gonna hit the bottom. We're gonna hit the bottom of the gorget there. This is gonna be a little tricky to show you, but I'm gonna try. So we're gonna hit the bottom of the gorget. Because that is gonna be in shadow, and that's also gonna hit kind of the bottom of the eagle wings there. And you can see how that defined that space there. Bottom of the gorget eagle but the center of the torso still has that nice moonstone moonstone highlight on it so that looks really nice uh, front of the shins inside of the leg crotch area now there's in there is the leather straps and we're going to paint those so those are going to be so much darker those are going to add a nice shadow as well um, but we do want we do want to darken the metal in there with this with this mix. Uh, bottom of here, elbow. Whoops. Shoot. So that did overspray again. I don't know why this is acting up on me, but it happens. So when it did overspray, what I did is I shot from the top to kind of push that, push the wet paint back down underneath. So there's a dot, I don't know if you can even see it, there's like a dot of wet paint right there on the, like his tricep area. I'm not gonna concern myself with that. Uh, ain't nobody got time for that. So again, this is part of, once that dries, you know, if you're entering a golden demon or something, you're gonna worry about stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm not too fussed about that. Um, you'd have to know it was there to, to really notice anything like that. So we're going to leave it as it is and look at that. That's looking, that's looking pretty good. Helmets well-defined, shoulders are well-defined, the light's good on the armor, um, let's see if I can, there we go, and we've got a really rich kind of base, but as far as the tones go, it's looking good, but we've lost kind of that yellow, that really rich yellow gold, so, which is what we want, because that moonstone, That moonstone step really washed out that yellow gold out of the highlight. So we want to put that back in. Sorry, I'm trying to. There we go. Do a little cleaning on the run here. So to put that richness back into the gold, we are going to go back with the elven gold, but we're going to thin it. We're going to thin it pretty significantly um, to where it's just a glaze. And I'll show you how we do that. Scale 75 does make their own thinner. 
Um, I find it's really helpful, especially for their just regular colored colored paints. Um, I found it's really helpful to use their thinner. Um, other people use just any acrylic thinner, but um, for the metallics and specifically for making for making a glaze like this, I like just using water because it does disperse the pigment, and we want this to be like you can you can see here. This is this is pretty thin. I might be a little. Yeah, maybe we'll put another put another two drops of a couple drops of the Elven Gold in there. Still, that's pretty pretty thin, but we want it to be thin because we are. There we go. We want it to be thin because we are just doing we are just doing a glaze, so. We don't want this to cover up. We don't want this to cover up all the work, all the hard work that we've done up to this point. So, you can see here is a really like if we're gonna go over that really thin glaze. So we're gonna just hit it. And what it's gonna do is that that's. That Moonstone Alchemy is going to keep that area light. But it's going to give a little bit of that yellow. That yellow tone back into the gold. Without, without erasing all the work that we've done before. Now you can see even just that quick. So you can see at the end of the gun here. Just a little. And it's still lighter. It's still a highlight, but we've gotten that yellow tone. We've got the yellow tone back. So you still see the helmet, shoulders, chest, really well defined. Really nice shadows, but that overall very warm, very yellow gold. So as far as airbrushing, we're good that is going to be the extent of the airbrushing on the gold and we're actually not going to do any more airbrushing on this model until we get to the blade at the end of the guardian spear and we'll mask that off and i'll show you how to do that and that's really that's the last thing that we're going to airbrush other than you know varnish so hope you enjoyed the tutorial scale 75 golds if you don't have them and you're going to be painting a lot of gold go and get them they are well worth the investment they're heavily pigmented they come in dropper bottles so they're gonna last um, I paint a lot of gold and I've only had to reorder maybe one or two of the golds um, they're fantastic so can't can't recommend them highly enough and I look forward to part two where we're gonna go in and we're gonna start knocking out some of the detail elements on this model and you're going to really start to see it come together uh, with that beautiful gold and looking forward to it hope you've uh, enjoyed and we'll see you soon thanks